coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. The war for Section 336 and model aviation's future. Freelance course shows drone pilots how to quickly get ATC clearance. And drones will assist in Florence recovery efforts. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. AMA President Rich Hansen has sent letters to the House and Senate requesting they consider a risk-based approach to regulating recreational UAS. This would ensure the safe integration of UAS into the nation's airspace, while continuing to allow responsible model aircraft operators to fly safely. It is still uncertain if Congress will pass an FAA authorization bill by the September 30th deadline, but legislators have begun work to resolve some of the issues surrounding the special rule for model aircraft which may include remote ID requirements on some aircraft. A congressional update on Section 336 was just released via a video from Interim Executive Director Chad Boudreau. Hello, I'm Chad Budrow with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. As you may know, right now Congress is trying to pass a bill to reauthorize the FAA. This FAA authorization will include the special rule for model aircraft or what we commonly refer to as Section 336. Section 336 is a congressional mandate to empower organizations like the AMA to manage, train, and educate our community of hobbyists as we have been doing safely for the past 82 years. This FAA reauthorization bill has been contentious in Washington. Government agencies, the Department of Defense, and other powerful companies have asked Congress to make unreasonable changes to 336 and mandate our members implement remote ID on all of our aircraft, including models like this AMA Alpha, which are commonly used in our flying fields and in our STEM curriculum. Fortunately, not all the proposed language is negative. We have introduced amendments that strengthen 336 and protect the model aviation hobby. With that being said, the FAA is steadfast that remote ID and changes to 336 are needed to accommodate the growing commercial drone industry. Wanting to mandate that every model aircraft and toy be remotely ID'd and some provisions to 336 could further restrict AMA's educational STEM programs, shut down our AMA flying sites, and have a negative impact on our hobby in general. Know that AMA has consistently pushed back and asked for a more reasonable approach. It's unclear whether Congress will pass an FAA authorization bill by the September 30th deadline, but rest assured the AMA will continue to fight for our hobby and advocate for more sensible laws as more drones enter the national airspace. Recently, AMA has asked certain members in key states to contact Congress. Now, right now, timing's not right to mobilize all of our members in a letter-writing campaign but we encourage everyone to call the offices of your legislators. We have provided a link to assist you in the description below. When speaking with your senators and representatives, share not only your love for model aviation, but ask they support the Academy of Model Aeronautics in the upcoming FA authorization bill. We appreciate your assistance in these efforts and all of your support for model aviation. Please reach out to the AMA government relations team with any questions or concerns. Thank you. In the next general minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. The U.S. Senate version of a long-term FAA reauthorization bill has been sitting idle since being approved by the Senate Commerce, Science and Transportation Committee in June. And if the full Senate does not take action by September 30th, a six short-term extension will have to be approved by the U.S. Congress to keep the FAA operating. 
If you thought Uberis was planning on making drone history, here comes Flytrex in partnership with King's Wall Golf Course and East Drones. Announcing the launch of the first fully operational golf course drone delivery system in the U.S. The service will enable patrons to order food and beverages from the clubhouse restaurant, Eagle's Crest Bar and Grill, straight to the greens, and have their items lowered directly to them. Fixed Wing Drone Solution Provider SenseFly says it has set a new standard in mapping tools with the launch of EBX. Launched with a promise that is not about the drone, but instead about overcoming business challenges, the EBX, part of Parrot, is designed to boost the quality, efficiency, and safety of an operator's geospatial data collection. It offers a camera to suit every job the accuracy and coverage capabilities to meet the requirements of even the most demanding projects, and is durable enough to work virtually every site. A Malaysian woman who had been reported missing since last week was found safe in the jungle behind her home, thanks to a drone owned by a private citizen. The 31-year-old woman was located about 200 yards from her house on Saturday afternoon. She had reportedly been missing since Friday. By using the drone belonging to a member of the public, we managed to detect movement in the jungle and eventually found her, said officer in charge of Pekka and Fire and Rescue Station. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Drone pilots can take a new free King Schools course titled Using Lance to Fly Drones in Controlled Airspace to learn how to use the FAA Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability. The online course indicates HD video and bullet points, followed by interactive questions to test your knowledge. Low Altitude Authorization and Notification Capability, pronounced LANCE, is a result of a partnership effort between the FAA and private industry. LANCE enables drone pilots to access controlled airspace near airports through near real-time processing of airspace authorizations. In this course, co-chairman of King Schools, Martha King, explains how operators of drones can get that authorization. The FAA has made it possible, but navigating the system is not easy. In this course, you will find simple, clear tips and information that can speed you on your way to getting the most from Lance, said King Schools CEO Barry Canoodala. We have also added this Lance information to updated versions of our drone pilot license initial test prep course. The Using Lance to Fly Drones in Controlled Airspace course covers topics including UAS facility maps, approved Lance UAS, service suppliers, before you fly FAA mobile app, FAA's drone zone, airspace authorization, and waivers. Drones will be instrumental in helping assess the damage caused by Hurricane Florence, which struck the North Carolina coast over the weekend and is continuing to cause widespread flooding across a broad area of the country. Breen Rell, a spokesman for the Washington-based industry group Edison Electric Institute, said that at least 53 teams have been recruited to help with a damage assessment. Drones are being employed by Duke Energy Corporation and Southern Company that are equipped with infrared and high zoom sensors for missions such as inspecting substations, identifying malfunctioning solar panels, and downed power lines. But hobby drone operators are still being advised to keep their aircraft on the ground. We don't want people to fly these drones and put people's lives and properties at risk, said North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Insurance companies say they will also be using unmanned aircraft to assess property damage. For example, Travelers has nearly 600 trained drone pilots under contract, according to the company's vice president for property claims, Jim Wukorfening. He said the use of drones will be a key piece of our response here for Florence. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program are Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. 
Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.